Chasm is a really interesting game. When I first heard about it, I was instantly in. It's a randomized Metroidvania game with RPG elements, a combination of things I've never seen before, and you can't tell me that it doesn't sound awesome. It's got tons of weapons, enemies, and upgrades, and true to any Metroidvania before, the progression system is fun and rewarding. It was made by BitKid and goes for 20 bucks on Steam. Since its release, it's gotten about 800 reviews with a 75% approval rate, and I can understand the consensus. Though Chasm excels in its combat, variety, and progression, it does have some pretty frustrating issues throughout. Let's talk about it. Chasm has you playing as a fresh recruit to an army of paladins or some shit. Your first mission is to go to a town that's been sacked by monsters. It's your job to find and rescue all the inhabitants of the town and find out why everyone went missing in the first place. If you've ever played a Metroidvania game before, you can imagine how this one plays out. You go into a dungeon, find places you can't get into, and then you explore until you find things that let you into those places. Rinse and repeat. All the while fighting monsters, doing parkour, and falling into pits of toxic goop constantly. The real draw, for me at least, was the promise of a randomized playthrough each time. I've loved every Metroidvania game I've played, and the thought of being able to play one forever without having the same experience twice seemed too good to be true. Sorry to break it to you, it is too good to be true. After playing this game three times in about 20 hours, the playthroughs are painfully similar, and the game calls itself random because it slightly shuffles the rooms around every time you load up a new save file. I mean, sure, it's different, but it's not different enough to make a... difference. It takes the same identical rooms of each level and puts them in a random order, which sounds fine, but the main points of interest, NPCs, progression items, chests, and secrets all stayed in the same rooms. So basically, on my second playthrough, I knew where to find everything because I recognized the rooms they were in. The hell chasm. Why you gotta do me like that? This sucked, and while it doesn't completely ruin the game, it's a bit of a slap in the face with how I was presented it. Don't get me wrong, the gameplay itself is fantastic for the most part, but this is just an example of the classic over-promised, under-deliver. Or maybe my expectations were just too high, which never happens with gamers. Anyway, let's talk about the gameplay itself. This is a hard game, and until you know what you're doing, it's extremely punishing. The reason for this is because early on, while you're still running headfirst into every enemy you see, there's no reliable way to heal other than leveling up or saving. This leads to some pretty rough situations until you're about a quarter of the way through the game and can actually afford to buy healing items. Either that or you'll learn not to get smacked around as much. You can't just go into this game expecting it to be a cakewalk, because it's really not. I played on normal difficulty and got my ass handed to me, and the punishment of getting your ass handed to you is pretty steep. After dying, you start where you last saved and lose all the progress you've made since. This happened to me way more often than I'd like to admit. Luckily, when I streamed this, I already knew what I was doing, so I ended up looking way better at the game than I actually am. So that's not a great example of this if you're using that as reference. The death punishment mechanic got old really quick, especially because at the beginning I was shit at this game. The real reason I got better is because I lost my progress two or three too many times and finally wised up that I shouldn't play like an idiot. This game is hugely over punishing right off the bat and it really sucked losing your progress time and time again, but I can't say it wasn't fair. You get good at this game when you start taking even the tiniest of enemies seriously, because when you aren't able to heal back the damage they deal, each hit matters a lot, no matter how small. Luckily, the movement is really responsive and the combat feels clean, so most of the time if you get hit, you can say with confidence that it's your own damn fault. The combat, in my eyes, is the centerpiece of this game. As you go through the levels, you're constantly brandishing your weapon at the enemies because they respawn every time you re-enter a level. There's never really any downtime between the combat because there always seems to be a monster all up in your face. Though you seem to be fighting constantly, the combat never seems to get stale, which is a huge credit to this game. This is because there are tons of weapons you can stumble on as you go through the dungeon, and tons of different enemies you can use them on. Every time I entered a new area or even got halfway through one, there were new enemies to face, all with different attacks, health pools, and drops. Though some sucked more than others, it always kept the gameplay fresh and interesting. 
If that's not enough to keep the combat fresh, there's also some RPG elements in this game. Every time you slaughter a monster, you have a chance to get gold, weapons, or armor, and you also get experience, which levels you up. The leveling system is fine, but it's nothing special. Each time you level up, your health refills and a random batch of stats gets boosted. In the early game, I was always keeping an eye on the experience counter, praying for the next level up. What I was really praying for was the next round of healing. Though it was exciting when I only had one health and only needed to kill one more enemy to get that sweet, sweet restoration, that's all I really looked forward to when leveling up. I say you get a random batch of stats because it's really unclear how your stats actually get boosted when you level up. The leveling system doesn't feel that engaging because of this, and I wasn't made to care about the stats. The game would be so much better if you could actually build your character's stats up with skill points or whatever, but Chasm is so hell-bent on being random, it takes away the power from the player. Not completely though, I suppose. You do have control over some aspects of how your character is built, but again, it's random. The way you can influence your stats is with the weapons and armor you find as you explore the dungeon. Things like strength, max health, defense, and magic can all be boosted with the armor you get, and while it does give some sense of control, it's not enough, again because of lack of choice. Much like the rest of the game, the character progression feels pretty streamlined. While magic is an option for combat, it doesn't feel like a good one, at least not for a main source of damage. You can buy and upgrade spells, but with the limited use of magic and the relatively low damage done with it, it never felt like a good option, just like a secondary ability I remember to use occasionally. And then comes the weapon variety. There are tons of weapons you can find in this game, all with different ranges, speeds, and damage that they deal. While there are a bunch to choose from, I felt like I only had a couple of actually good options, and mainly stuck with swords. Not only are they stabby as hell, but they're quick, have good range, and do good damage. The others are either way too close range, or way too slow, which often resulted in me getting smacked across the face more often than I'd like. And as I said before, every hit taken matters in this game. While the combat was always fun and engaging, the things that your character can actually do were never really explained. I usually rely on some kind of tutorial to show me the ropes, but it just wasn't part of this game. I went through about half of my first playthrough without knowing that I could dodge, or that magic was even a thing. I understand that the point of Metroidvania is its discovery and exploration, but I don't think it should be up to the player to figure out all the basic abilities on their own. It is worth noting that at the time I was playing on a keyboard and mouse. I usually default to keyboard being a primarily PC gamer, but the default controls for this game suck and aren't very intuitive at all. If you're on PC, I'd recommend either reformatting the controls or using a controller, because hell if I can keep track of four fingers at the same time. There's a lot of shit to explore in this game, and while you're spelunking, you're sure to find winding tunnels and things you can't possibly explore all at once. Sometimes the Metroidvania hits and you don't have the tools to get where you want to go, or sometimes you just follow a pathway and completely forget to go back and check all the paths you've crossed. If you're like me and you forget things nearly instantly, this can be a problem. This problem resulted in me missing the mage on my first playthrough and not getting magic until I was like 5 hours in, and that continued to be a problem even after I got wise to the game mechanics. This is where the map comes in. I had my map up constantly when I was playing through this game. The map was always a bit confusing and clunky to use, which definitely shouldn't be the case for such an important part of the game. I say it's clunky because it's not always easy to find the paths that you have yet to travel, which makes backtracking a real pain in the ass to deal with, and there's a lot of backtracking to do in this game. So much, in fact, that it starts to become a chore. Every time I got to a point where I didn't know where to go next, I started to dread the process of scanning every inch of the map. Luckily, the map has a system that tells you which rooms have shit you haven't discovered in it yet by putting a little dot in it but more often than not, checking them was just time consuming and not worth it. Or fun. An example of this is these gold-plated white chests that promise riches beyond your wildest dreams just by the look of them. You pass these over and over again, seeing them on the edge of your screen but you can't quite reach it. And when you finally get to them, all you get is a random assortment of shit you don't need, and this happens every time. This is an example of Metroidvania mechanics done wrong. Don't tease it if it's not worth it. That's got to be my biggest gripe with this game, but there are some good aspects about the exploration too. The part of exploring that I loved in this game was finding the locked up villagers throughout the maps. 
After freeing these villagers, they go back to the village where they act as shops or upgrade stations. On top of that, they usually have a secondary item somewhere in the dungeon which upgrades what each of them can do. It's always fun to hunt down these items that they need, and the progression of the village was one of the most satisfying parts of the game for me. Also, as you're exploring, you'll come across countless platforming challenges and jumping puzzles to beat, which are all just challenging enough to be fun, but not so challenging that they suck to go through. Near the end of the game, the platforming started to resemble Hollow Knights, and honestly, I wish more of the game had that kind of platforming in it, because it got really fun. The soundtrack in this game is really cool, and not just because the songs themselves are well made and fit each environment well. It's cool because you can switch between the original soundtrack and the 8-bit soundtrack whenever you want, so you can experience the sound of the game and whatever you're feeling in the moment. If you like the music in the background of this video, great, because it's all from the game. I enjoyed my time with Chasm, and though it has its quirks and it's not nearly as replayable as promised, the core gameplay is solid and overall a good experience. I may not be returning to this game over and over again like I thought, but I'm glad to say that I played it. If you like Metroidvanias and can take the heat of Dark Souls style combat, Chasm is the game for you.